every copy of Super Mario 64 is personalized. Or at least, that's how the myth goes. So let's play Devil's Advocate by taking up the perspective of the Believer for the purposes of this section. When you first slotted that cartridge into your old N64 and powered the game up, you became an unknowing participant in one of Nintendo's grandest experiments, the Personalization AI. This AI was an experiment so great in scale that neither Nintendo nor Miyamoto developed it, and they certainly had only a modicum of control over it. That experiment affected all of us. It would change the game in subtle ways at first, moving a wall or a door a bit over to add some variety to the gameplay. Next, it would start to challenge you. It would alter levels in ways you never expected, and even used assets you'd never seen before on your copy, or anyone else's. Some of these changes were entirely benign, even unnoticeable. You'd walk right past one and not spare it a second thought. Some of those changes, however, guard new memories into your childhood brain, things you don't often think about, but which you will remember forever. For some players, it manifested as the massive, ghostly head of Wario at the end of a dark hallway, taunting you as it gets closer and faster and faster. For others, it was entirely new paintings and stages, featuring a jumble of assets from throughout the game that made for an uncanny experience. So, if you ever played Mario 64 on an original cartridge, what was your experience? Compared to the lifespan of the original game that spawned the tales, the personalization AI seems to be a relatively new idea. While Super Mario 64 was released in 1996, which was 28 years ago at the time of recording, the every copy of Mario 64's personalized meme only really hits a keyword scene a bit over four years ago, in May of 2020. Perhaps not unsurprisingly, the Mario 64 iceberg keyword search trends follow directly on the heels of the beginning of the personalization trend. This is all due to the creepypasta, which is just a creepy copy and pasted story for those who might be unfamiliar, that was making the rounds on the internet at the time. The creepypasta was short, posted by Anonymous. It reads as follows. Every copy of Super Mario 64 is personalized. Nintendo's experimental AI adapts and subtly creates a slightly altered version of the game tailored specifically for you, appealing to you subconsciously in ways you don't even notice, as well as attempting to mess with you and study how you react to it. Have you ever played someone else's copy of Mario 64? Have you ever felt like something was just a little bit off? That's why. That's how. This is much more than just simple experimentation with procedural generation, however, there are many layers to this, and some of them are more sinister and malicious than others. Super Mario 64 is, at its core, an insidious and evil work of human creation. It was this story of Mario 64 personalization that became hooked in the minds of many, and it essentially led to the iceberg being posted in the first place, which is why it features so prominently at the bottom center of the original graphic. Though many dismissed the idea as a fun but deluded story, the nostalgia and appreciation for the game caught many others' attentions, and within days it was snowballing out of control. The Mario 64 iceberg and the story of the personalization AI that went along with it were soon shared outside of their typical image board homes where the idea had been incubating and growing into a full-fledged canon of its own. The audience of Twitter, Reddit, and YouTube, and the like caught wind of such a wild tale, and that's when it spread like fire. Interest in the concept online peaks within the following months, largely thanks to how often it was shared on these platforms. For a time, people just couldn't get enough. While we can explain away most of the tall tales that cropped up during this period, it certainly didn't make it any easier to decipher since there was already an ongoing massive leak from Nintendo's assets going back decades. One of these assets was an unseen Luigi model hidden in the game's files, confirming that indeed, L is real after all. The cherry on top is the fact that the number that had always been associated with the phrase 2401 also coincides with the leak being released exactly 24 years and one month after the game was. To understand the personalization AI story, we need to understand how it is theorized to work in the first place. Yeah, yeah, look, I know, it's pretty ridiculous that anyone could ever hope to fit any sort of complex AI system into an N64 cartridge alongside a full game, which was already full of cut assets, but let's suspend our disbelief for just a moment for the purpose of this explanation. The legend goes that Nintendo, always looking to be on the cutting edge of gaming, either developed or acquired a complex artificial intelligence system, 
which they intended to deploy in their line of games. The Nintendo 64 was a leap in power for the Nintendo systems, and Super Mario 64 was considered a huge part of that first step, if not epitomizing the first step entirely as the console's flagship title. Teaming up with the computer's manufacturer Silicon Graphics Inc, aka SGI, known for developing some of the most powerful workstations at the time, the collaboration bore fruit with Project Reality, much of which went into the Nintendo 64's core development. The Mario 64 team appreciated Silicon Graphics computers so much that they even named a character after their favorite piece of hardware. SGI's MIPS processor is the namesake of MIPS the Rabbit. Because of this close collaboration, there are some that cite SGI as the progenitor of the personalization AI's unique coding, which Nintendo would have wanted to keep secret, even going so far as to tie it into the reason for why SGI filed bankruptcy and was bought out some years later, despite all of its successful ventures. One of my favorite wild hardware theories is the Nintendo Mega Connector idea, which I found on a wiki called The Secret Slide. Apparently, it would be a chip that was put into every N64 cartridge and allowed wireless connection to a secret satellite deployed by Nintendo for the purpose of supporting the AI wirelessly. I don't mean to sound rude, but you know you can open the cartridges up for yourself, right? There's only one small board inside, with only a few chips attached, and maybe an onboard battery sometimes. There is no mega connector inside, nor is there even the simplest of antennae. Wouldn't you just install it once on the console anyways, instead of in every single cartridge? Like, did no one open up the Mario cartridge at all and just go, Why is there a wireless transmitter system in here? And Mario's just like standing there with a bat in his hands like, Forget about it. No, but really, I'm sorry to be the one to break it to you. Gotta love those stories that start with, So I worked at Nintendo. They get bonus points if it's like the dad or the uncle that worked there instead, when it's like a kid telling the story. Always gotta love that stuff. But no, there is no Nintendo Mega Connector. Sorry to burst your bubble. So, what were some of the things that were said to appear in the game when the personalization AI was at work anyways? One of the most common occurrences seems to be the castle's interior restructuring itself, usually moving walls and stairs into weird spots, sometimes turning one of the regular hallways into a dead end, and opening up other hallways to goodness knows where else. It's easy to see where people got this one from, because the castle interior does seem to have a strange layout already, and there are a number of spots that Mario can glitch into which trap him in the void if the player doesn't know how to get him out. Of course, we also have the stories of Luigi being an unlockable character you can actually play as, which I think just about all of us can relate to. When I was a kid, you couldn't go into me otherwise, even though I'd never so much as even heard a story about it yet. I definitely spent way too long staring at that plaque on the star statue in the castle courtyards found wondering if it really said something about Luigi, and if so, what did it say? Well, the Luigi thing isn't as crazy as it sounds, not just because the files for him were found in the asset leak. Turns out, not long after the leak, previously lost footage from a beta demo before the game's release show a few seconds of Luigi playing right alongside Mario. Turns out it'd been there the whole time. Naturally, Luigi wasn't the only Marioverse character that players figured absolutely had to be in the game. Wario's inclusion was always a popular theory, perhaps even more so than Luigi's. It had become such a meme, even as far back as the release in 1996, that Nintendo presented a panel at E3 that included an image of a large floating Wario head appearing in front of the Dire Dire Docks painting. Sound familiar? That's the Wario apparition, which has never been conclusively seen in a game, but which many players attest to having experienced. Nintendo certainly didn't make it easier to disprove these theories by essentially kicking off the Wario apparition meme themselves, but hey, it's one of my favorite parts of the lore. One of the later popular additions to that lore is the White-Eyed Chain Chomp, which, as its name implies, is a version of the Chain Chomp with entirely white eyes. This change has been labeled as an omen of more personalizations to come, so if you see one, watch out. You could end up fighting a Blarg in Lethal Lava Land, or stumbling into the forest beyond the fences of Big Boo's Haunt, or even taking a trip to the islands in the distance, where who knows what happens. If the idea of going to a new stage appeals to you, or you just want to see stages you know so well as they once were in the old beta versions of the game, then thankfully there are plenty of fan creations to satisfy those curiosities. One of the most popular projects of late are the ROM hacks that recreate the beta gameplay found in the Shoshinkai, or Space World demos, from 1995, which was also seen in demo footage in various media leading up to the game's release. The Preservation Project is a faithful adaptation of this demo gameplay, essentially allowing players today to get much of the same experience that gamers almost three decades ago would have had while anticipating the latest Mario title. On the other hand, 
B3313 is an infamous ROM hack that ends up being a monster of a game in its own right. It takes the beta designs and then ups the ante, adding hundreds of power stars to collect and tons of features that will certainly make you feel like you're playing a heavily personalized copy of Super Mario 64. Such ROM hacks have inspired spooky video series like SM64 Classified, which follow gameplay that is said to have occurred in these highly personalized copies of the game. One of the most common characters, a textureless Mario that essentially appears with no face, was even dubbed Stanley and adopted as a sort of mascot for the AI. I'd also like to shout out the beta archive, which provides tons of great footage, music edits, and more in this beta Mario 64 style. Thank you, beta archive. Well, 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 you did it. You've gone all the way down the Mario 64 iceberg, past cackling Wario heads and wide-eyed chain chomps, past those featureless Mario models and the deep cover AI with an agenda, and you've made it back to the surface unscathed. Impressive. Now that you're a resident expert on all the spooky and secretive inner workings of Super Mario 64, how about we switch up to something a bit more lighthearted? I've been practicing with some of my favorite games, including SM64 and Donkey Kong Arcade version, and I've been able to achieve some respectable speeds and scores. I've even finally got a solid pacer of a run on my Mario 16 star route and set a huge new personal best. Join me on my speedrunning journey by clicking the video recommended on screen now. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a quick like and subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next video.